Welcome to Fennel Heath Baptist Church for Sunday the 9th of August 2020 in the book of Isaiah chapter 40. It says, Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. May the Lord bless our time together this day. Amen.
The reading this morning is taken from Ephesians 2 and it's verses 11 to 22. And the heading is One in Christ. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves a circumcision, that done in the body by the hands of men. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. What's it like to be an outsider? To be part of a culture but excluded from being fully accepted because of your place of birth or your parentage? Today we call this discrimination. It is when one race or class of people considers itself superior and when it can restrict and benefit what other groups can access. Back in 2010, the Equality Act came into force which brought together various former acts and covered anti-discrimination in the workplace and wider society. This covered age, gender, marital status, whether pregnant, disability, race, colour, nationality, ethnicity or national origin, religion or belief, sex and sexual orientation. This act covered buying or renting property. So why have we, in recent times, had to legislate making it illegal for private landlords to exclude potential tenants who are on social security? It's not long ago that it was commonplace to see notices on the doors of rented accommodation that said, no blacks, no Irish, no travellers, no dogs. Today, we still see examples of discrimination in our society. Examples can be found in personal attitudes, the media, education, immigration rights, housing or social life. The awareness of this has been heightened by the Black Lives Matter campaign and COVID-19 has shone a light on equality of opportunity within certain ethnic groups within the UK. I sat down to attempt to see if I had experienced discrimination. Initially, I thought I had not, but then I recalled my career advice. I went for the interview when I was at the end of my secondary education and I was offered three options, secretarial, teaching or nursing. In the 1960s, there were careers for girls and different options for boys. We lived in Australia in the early 1970s. One year we travelled by coach around three quarters of Australia. At the end of a day's journey, hot and thirsty, the only place to find relief was in the pub. 
No women were allowed in the bars. Remember Coronation Street and Ina Sharples and Minnie Coldwell in the snug? No bar for them. In, in 2002, a team from Red Hill went to Nepal and we experienced the caste system. Whole families, including very small children, breaking up stone by the side of the road. That was all this particular caste were allowed to do. No social mobility. Our reading today from Ephesians 2, 11 to 22, follows on from last week. The passage commences with the word, therefore. A former minister at Red Hill in Worcester used to say, try to find out what the therefore is therefore. Paul was writing to non-Jews, so let's explore. Why did the Jews discriminate against the non-Jews, also called Gentiles? The Jews believed that God's covenant was just for them. They showed their spiritual commitment by a physical act. All boys aged eight days were circumcised to show that they were set apart as part of God's covenant with Abraham, as set out in Genesis 17.11. To adopt Jewish culture, they had to forego idol worship and sorcery, incest, eating blood, working on the Sabbath, because the Sabbath was a sign between God and Israel alone, eating unleavened bread on Passover, violating Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, when all Jews sought to expiate their sins and be reconciled to God. So for 25 hours they didn't work, bathe, anoint their bodies with oil, wear leather shoes, have sex, but they did fast. No intermarriage was allowed between Jews and non-Jews to stop diluting the race and preventing potential terrorism. But they should be kind to non-Jews and support them. Leviticus 19 sets out rules for living. And verse 18 says, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. But Gentiles were considered unreliable, malevolent and violent. Hence they couldn't act as a witness. They were ineligible for the rights and privileges accorded by God for Israel having no hope and without God. To prevent Jews adopting idolatrous behaviour, this even extended to not eating with non-Jews in case the food had been subject to sacrifice, and they shouldn't enter into business arrangements in case they were asked to take oaths to other gods. Jesus and his disciples were Jews. They grew up living as devout Jews, worshipping in the temple and observing all the Jewish rites. They also knew that non-Jews had been blessed by God. They knew about Ruth, they knew about Job, and they knew that Jonah had been sent to non-Jews. So what was life like for the early Christians? The disciples had a Jewish mindset. The Messiah was for the Jewish people and not for non-Jews. Foreigners, women and children were regarded as the property owned by male heads of household and the local rulers and were often employed as bonded labour as it sets out in Matthew 18. But Paul, who'd previously been Saul, was set aside as an apostle for the Gentiles as in Acts 9. Philip was sent to the eunuch as it sets out in Acts 8, and he baptised him, someone who'd been castrated, a man not eligible for full membership of the Jewish community. Then there was Peter's vision concerning the unclean animals, where he was told not to call anything impure that God had created. And as a result of that, Peter went off to Cornelius, a Roman centurion, who was God-fearing but not Jewish, breaking Jewish law concerning eating and visiting non-Jews in their homes, Acts 10. As the church became more non-Jewish, 
we know that some Christians believed that you needed to be converted to Judaism first. Thus, you would need to be circumcised. In AD 50, the Council of Jerusalem stated that circumcision was not required. However, in Galatia, we know that this was not adhered to because Paul wrote extensively on this subject in his letter to them approximately four years later. The early Christians were aware of the discrimination against non-Jews. This was very evident to them when they went to the temple. The Gentiles couldn't enter the inner sanctums, the inner courts. They were restricted to the outside courts and it was separated by a wall. On that wall was a sign barring the Gentiles on pain of death of going further into the temple. Jesus broke down this wall and destroyed the barrier between Jews and non-Jews with all its laws and regulations. This new life was based on peace and all having access to God. <clears throat> Jesus, in our reading, is described as the cornerstone. A cornerstone spans both sides of a corner, anchoring the two walls together bringing together Jews and non-Jews, with the foundations being the prophets for the Jews and the apostles for the Gentiles, all becoming a dwelling place for God. No temple made by hands was required. Paul's letter to the Ephesians emphasised the way God had transformed them. As we heard last week, they had been given spiritual wisdom. They had knowledge of God. They were made alive and enabled to sit with Christ in the heavenly places. By grace, they had been saved through faith. It was a gift of God. Jesus came to reconcile all of God's creation. Ephesians 2.13 says, In Christ, you who are once far away have been brought near to the blood of Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5, 18, God reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. Jesus brought us together as one holy people. How do we demonstrate this today? Peter Schultz in 1966, who was a Catholic priest, wrote this hymn. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity will one day be restored, and they will know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand and together we'll spread the news that God is in our land and they'll know we are Christians by our love. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. John 13, 34, 35. In 1975, Fred Kahn wrote these words to a song that can be found in Hope Publishing. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe we are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O Lord, your lessons, as in our daily life we struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people, for all, not just for some. To love them as we find them, or as they may become. Let your acceptance change us, so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love. To practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and laughter's healing art. Lord, for
For today's encounters with all who are in need, we hunger for acceptance, for righteousness and bread. Who need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Renew us with your spirit, Lord. Free us, make us one. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says we are all baptised in the one spirit. We're told in James 2, verse 9, that we should not show favouritism as this was a sin. Do not look down on others. This is difficult to comprehend when we go into ancient churches and see parts of the church set aside for the wealthy family, often close to the altar. In St Michael and All Angels in Great Whitley in Worcestershire, you can see the tallest fumery, a monument to the Foley family, which was built in 1737, which dominates the building. So once again, there was a distinction made between those who are rich and those who were not. Revelation 7, 9 to 10, describes the age to come when there will be people from every nation, tribe and language. In the Christian church, there should be no discrimination. Neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 3. The very reason why the Jews thought they were superior and the only ones chosen by God was set aside we are all heirs, all created in God's image. God cares for us all and he accepts all who fear him and does what is right. Acts 10, 34. Outsiders do not have to become like us, whatever we think us is. We welcome all. We are one community. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We shall walk with each other. We shall walk hand in hand. We shall walk with each other. We shall walk hand in hand. And together we spread the news that God is in our land. They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love.